Oh, hey, historians. Me and I are at this awesome amusement park today. I can't wait to ride these big roller coasters. Mia, can you buy the tickets? What? You have no money. I knew you were spending too much in the 20s. Fine, I'll buy them. In the 1920s, the economy was booming, and like Mia, people spent a lot of money. But then the economy suddenly came crashing down. Hey, that sounds like the roller coaster. They go up, reaching thrilling heights, and then whoosh, suddenly they come spiraling down in a terrifying drop. Well, that's what happened in the stock market crash of 1929. While we ride these coasters today, we'll learn about what the stock market is, what caused it to collapse in 1929, and how it led to the largest economic crisis in American history, the Great Depression. Mia, did you get the tickets? Sweet! I think there's some games here too. Can we please go play ring toss before we go on the roller coaster? Have you ever played Ring Toss? It's so fun. Actually, it's kind of like the stock market, which is where people buy and sell pieces of companies called shares or stocks. Think of all of these bottles as companies and the rings as the shares you can buy. When you play the game, you toss a ring. And if it lands on a bottle, you get a prize. But if it doesn't, you lose your money. When you buy stocks, you give a company some money. And if the company grows, the value of your share increases. Then you can sell your shares to make a profit. That profit is like the big prize. But if the company fails, you lose all the money you invested. If you had to choose a modern company to invest your money in, what would it be? If you want to make money in your choice, you probably chose a company that you think is going to grow in the future. That's strategy. Ring toss requires some strategy too. You have to look closely at each bottle and try to guess which one is the easiest to land a ring on. But sometimes you might try to take a risk and throw your ring on the bottle that will get you the biggest prize. That's kind of like speculation in the stock market which is when people make risky investments in hopes of making a lot of money quickly. Sometimes you guess right and win, and other times, well, you might miss. Mia, do you want to play too? I know you don't have the money to play, but you could always borrow some to buy rings if you want. But you'll have to give me half of the prizes that you win. Do you think it's a good idea for Mia to borrow money to play the game? What might happen if she doesn't win? Well, in the stock market, people often used to borrow money from banks to buy stocks. This was called buying on margin. People did this because they wanted to invest more money than they had, hoping they'd make enough to pay back the borrowed money and keep some of the profit for themselves. But if they didn't make enough money to pay back what they borrowed, then they'd be in debt. All right, now that we understand the basics of the stock market, I think we're ready to get on the roller coaster. Just remember, while our ring toss examples help us learn some basic terms, the real stock market is much more complex. But we've got a solid foundation now to understand the stock market crash of 1929. Here we go, Mia. This coaster is huge. It seems like we're going to keep going up forever. Before we get to the top, let's talk about the causes of the stock market crash of 1929. This part of the ride is just like the economic boom of the roaring 20s. Businesses were growing, wages were increasing, and people were full of optimism. 
As businesses grew, people began buying more and more stocks, assuming they would get rich. As more and more people began buying stocks, the prices of shares began to increase. This is usually a good thing. It's supposed to mean businesses are thriving. Because of this growth, banks were also optimistic about the economy, so they were more willing to give loans. So people started to buy stocks on margin, predicting that the companies they invested in would keep growing. So they'd make enough money back to pay their loans and still get rich. Some investors were very optimistic about how well the economy was doing, so speculation was very high. People just guessed which companies would grow without really thinking carefully about the potential risks. It was like throwing a bunch of rings at one time, assuming all of them would land on a bottle. At the time, all of these factors seemed to be a sign of a thriving economy. But remember, we're strapped into this roller coaster, and while it's going up right now, that means we have a long way to fall. What signs do you see in the economy and stock market of the 20s so far that make you think the economy might be about to crash? Well, on a day called Black Tuesday in 1929, Investors began to realize the consequences of risky investments and buying on margin. On that day, the stock market reached the highest point of this economic roller coaster. After that, it all came crashing down. Whoa! This is the craziest roller coaster ever! On Black Tuesday in October 1929, the US economy started spiraling down. People began to realize that those risky investments were huge mistakes. Because so many people were investing in the stock market throughout the 20s, by 1929, the price of shares was very high. Think back to our lesson preview about supply and demand. As demand for stocks increased, so did the prices. What would happen to the prices if people no longer wanted to invest in the stock market? Well, when everyone realized that the shares they were buying could be sold for much more than they were worth, people started rushing to sell them. But nobody wanted to buy overpriced stocks. So the supply was high and demand was low. This caused the price of shares to start dropping. Let's think back to the ring toss game. If everyone realized it was impossible to win, would they keep playing? How would this affect the price of the rings? Just like in the stock market crash, if winning ring toss was impossible, no one would play and the price of the rings would drastically decrease, just like stock prices in 1929. Amid the panic, banks started telling people they needed to repay their loans. But since no one could sell their shares, they couldn't get the money to pay the banks. People started to worry that banks would fail and close, so they rushed to withdraw all of their savings from the banks. This situation is called a bank run. As so many people withdrew their money, many banks ran out of cash and had to shut their doors. How do you think bank closures will impact the economy in the 1930s? Well, these bank runs caused a ripple effect. Some banks closed before people could take their money out. And with banks closed, businesses and individuals were no longer able to get loans. Businesses began to struggle, and many were forced to shut down. People across the nation began to lose their jobs and struggle to pay for their homes or other necessities. This financial trouble in the United States also affected other countries, leading to economic problems all around the world. This was the beginning of the worst economic crisis in American history, the Great Depression, 
which we'll learn about in our next lesson. Wow, what a ride! I think I remember now why I don't like roller coasters. The stock market crash shows us how even the smallest decisions can have huge impacts. It reminds us of the importance of being informed, understanding risks, and thinking about the long-term consequences of our actions. We'll see you next time. Until then, remember, shaping the future begins with understanding the past. Hey.